It's Benji Michael here with Derpy Games. And I just got our advanced copy. So I wanted to show you guys what it looks like and do an unboxing with it and do a video, which you guys deserve. Um, so without further ado, here's the advanced copy. And I am very excited. So let me get this ready here. Cool. I hope so. so the box is about eight inches by five inches. Um, and uh, uh, it's pretty heavy. I believe it's about um, uh, 1.3 pounds. So uh, relatively, <laughs> it kind of feels like a brick, like I promised. <laughs> uh, we really packed a lot of stuff into it. Um, one of the big things that I wanted to make sure we had on this box when I get it off, get the wrapper off, is a fancy schmancy spot UV, which you can kind of see. Um, so there's spot UV on some really certain areas of it. Um, but all in all, it's matte finish with spot UV on the box. Um, here's the back. The game is eight player. It has all eight na nanobots inside of it. Um, and this is kind of part of one of our plans to start uh, releasing what we're calling an eight by five box game. And then we're gonna rotate to another type of box um, so, but yeah, that's the cover. Rule book. Um, the rule book is actually 12 pages. Uh, saddle stitched, which just means it has staples in it. Um, so back of the rule book. Lots of fun, ruley types of things in here, and kind of lots of little Easter eggs for what's to come. Um, I probably went through close to 500 revisions of this by myself, and had you know probably close to 12 people constantly reviewing it with me. So hopefully it meets everybody's quality standards, and it should be pretty easy to read and pick up. Um, most important part is a card explanation part in the back of the book. Um, and here's all the thanks. Thanks for you. Thanks to you guys in the back of the book. So check it out. Um, and then the acknowledgments are right there for everybody who's been incredibly helpful through this journey. And yeah. Um, so a standard game comes with... Uh, 96 cards. Uh, I think if we ever do deck building, it the deck building will actually be um, about 48 to 50 cards. I think 96 cards is pretty extreme. Um, ooh, they're so fancy. Uh, back of the card, reaction cards, front of the cards. I really wanted a kind of seamless transition for the back of these, uh, so no lines, or seamless transition on the fronts. I really didn't want any borders or lines on them just to make them feel a little bit more different than a traditional card. Uh, but these cards feel really nice and thick. I don't, I don't know if I can show this off, but let's see. Um, I pulled this out of Kittens in the Blender, actually. So you can kind of see this, I don't know if I'm doing this right, but uh, long story short is they're not as flimsy as these and they're definitely a little bit more durable now, now that I upgraded them um, to a premium core. But yeah, we have lots of beautiful colors. This is something I made sure I was including in this in this box was custom cards for custom powers that you guys could design. 
Um, so you can write your charge your charge numbers in right here, name, um, the strain that it affects, and powers down here. So lots of the colors are really vivid. Um, and believe it or not, that's actually very hard to do for um, print, <laughs> is to make sure that we have really bright and vivid colors. Um, as promised, I wanted to make sure that we have Five Lake Studios card in here for Picross, uh, Picross HD, and for Euchre HD. So if you get time, check out fivelakestudios.com, um, and their apps are available on the App Store. But... Boom, I'm so happy. Uh, also, when you open up the box, you'll see these um, strain cards. So, you know, everybody kind of has a, a favorite strain when they're playing. So I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, you, you get the cool text about them and all that stuff on here. Um, I actually hand drew all these textures and uh, with on my iPad and, uh, all the textures that are actually on the nanobots I hand drew. So I, I wanted I kind of wanted to showcase what I've been working on for so for so long and make sure that everybody gets to really see and get get a good feel for um, what what these these dudes actually kind of look like and 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 get a good feel for you know what their powers are like and all that stuff. Uh, I am so thrilled to be seeing this for the first time in print. You have no idea. Uh, this one was probably the most fun to draw. Uh, so, and in case you don't know the story about Ghost, it's a big smiley face because it's the most mischievous of the strains. Um, he's probably <laughs> he's probably one of the more powerful ones, but probably my least favorite to play. <laughs> um, it's just not my playing style, uh, but. He is a lot of fun, um, but these cards feel excellent, and they're exactly what I was hoping for. Um, so, and then the rest of what's in the box is you have these two millimeter thick chipboard pieces, um, and uh, so we have the petri. Whoops, they're starting to fall out already. <laughs> we have a petrified piece. And then we have your standard piece that you play during the game. Um, I made sure that we have the Derpy Kitty on there. And that says Derpy Games. Uh, whoops. Derpy Games. But yeah, um, lots of work uh, from a production manufacturing standpoint. Uh, just because we were trying to get the box to actually fit into a um, small uh parcel package. Uh, that way it has a standard flat rate of shipping of $5. Uh, this was incredibly, this actually ate up most of my time, um, well, next to the rule book, uh, actually doing the layouts for this and figuring out what the largest is that I could actually produce these tiles. Um, and it came down to being like uh, 29 millimeters by 29 millimeters or something, I, I forget but I really stretched them as far as I could uh, to, to get them as close as I could within the, the proper cut boundaries. Uh, we had to leave six millimeters on each side um, all the way around and have a space between each tile of six millimeters. Um, and then right here, just to make sure that I had enough room to print them, um, I actually had to have the tiles go back to back and, and that way they'll share one cut line, which terrified me. <laughs> there really is no drawback to doing it, but I've never designed for something like that before, I guess. And that's that's what scared me about, about doing that. Um, but one cool fact about these pieces is these backgrounds that I hand drew is actually one giant background. So every tile within this game actually has a different background. Um, so, um, especially on, on, and it's very noticeable on tiles like Blood, or I mean Blight, <clears throat> excuse me, where, where the background looks like, kind of like Blood, but it has like lots of, um, almost floating, 
floating cells and things inside of it. And uh, it was it was really important for me to make the seamless between all the tiles. And it took a lot of time to to really get it in there and make and make sure that you know we had this uh, uniform background across all the tiles. Um, but also make sure that each tile was unique uh, in a, in and of itself. So that's blight. Um, and then we have the chrono strain. And I cannot tell you guys again how excited I am to show this off. So with Chronos, um, I really focused on making ice crystals. So Chronos kind of, uh, with this strain, the idea was that, you know, um, uh, as particles uh, get cooler, they slow down. So with this, we wanted to kind of emphasize that on a microscopic level, when particles are, are actually slowing down, when things are slowing down within the game, uh, Chronos is actually kind of cooling it off and, and having the particles slow down. Um, with these guys, it was um, it's pretty pretty easy because they, they inject um, venom or I, I believe in the rule book I call it nauseous nauseous fluids. Um, so naturally, they're going to have kind of a more aqueous background. Um, echidna. Um, Echidna is the mother of all monsters, if you haven't heard the story yet, and I really wanted to focus on them being a lot more mythic um, and having kind of mythic-themed powers, but the background is kind of designed to be almost like a liquid, but also kind of like vines, um, growing vines. Um, somehow Hydra's tied in very well um, in, into this theme, and if you notice, I, I made their their emblem, which is a trident. Um, it also kind of looks a lot like the three heads. Um, so th somehow thematically, I, I managed to tie all of this stuff together visually. Um, and I am I am really pumped. Uh, you can't, you may not be able to see it. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Um, but the, this, the front base of each of these tiles actually looks a lot uh, like scales. Um, it's a little blurry, but the detail on it's incredibly fine. And um, again, all, all hand painted digitally uh, to make it look a lot like scales. Um, so each, each base on every tile is, is unique to that, that strain of tile and a strain of nanobot. And the backgrounds, again, are completely unique per tile. Uh, ghost Strain. Uh, whoops, I don't think I showed the back of Echidna. Here's the back of Echidna. And then Ghost Strain. Uh, yep, I mean, their, their background is, their primary power is Blink. So I, I wanted their background to kind of reflect light and um, and to kind of make it look like uh, there's kind of a transportation blink effect going on. Um, a lot of, you know, just a generic transportation influence there in a the sense of like sci-fi transportation or fantasy, you know, t or not transportation, but teleportation. Um, concept where you know you're being transported by light um and and that's kind of the the point about ghost is the idea is that they they kind of fade out from view and then reappear in another location um so by doing the background with with kind of a light effect um the the bubbles on here are called a bokeh effect um by doing kind of a bokeh effect on the background it, it it's very reminiscent of kind of a, a shimmering light surrounding them. Um, Inferno, strain. Um, these guys are were really difficult um, for me for some reason. Uh, 
I didn't want to overdo the flames in the background and subtract from the actual design. Um, but there are very light flames in the background. Um, I wanted it just to have a very subdued feeling of heat. Um, and then the crab, like the, the nanobot in the middle that reflects a crab, um, it's kind of very, it's, it's very hard to figure out what kind of texture a crab shell has, uh, believe it or not. So I kind of made it a little bit more, um, prismatic, uh, which I figured if I made a bright background, it would subtract from, uh, and then the, this piece right here, the base is, is very, uh, um, the word is called like stippled or stippling or something, but uh, when I did it, I I made it very just textured, like it's almost like the crab shell zoomed in, so you could see it up close. Um, so it it was this one in particular took me a lot of time to properly space it on the tile and figure out how large I could make the claws and all this stuff. Um, it it certainly took me a very long time. Um, one of the other things about about Inferno that I was very adamant about doing is that the strain emblem on the front of the tile, when I was designing that strain emblem, I wanted to make sure that um, it, it didn't look like all the other flame logos that other games use. So like a fireball or something. I wanted it to since this is a kind of a robotic technology game, I wanted to make sure that it's clean um, and simple uh, rather than being very organic, which was uh, one of my missions for, for this, for that logo. And here's the back. I know I showed it, but I'm just showing it again. <laughs> Alrighty, Relic. So Relic is kind of an interesting one. Um, this actual design of this nanobot has close to 300 layers to it um, within the Photoshop file. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, 300 layers is a lot. Uh, and I may have gone a little overboard, and I realized that, but it, it was pretty important for me to get the lighting and the texture on this guy just right. Um, so with the background, uh, you probably can't see it, it probably just looks like black, but it has a very light, subdued slate texture. Um, and the reason why I did slate is um, I actually used to take uh, classes as a kid um, to, to go dig up fossils, and they were always embedded in slate. And with Relic, for me, I, I definitely wanted to make it reminiscent of a, a trilobite and but also one of the kind of like a trilobite meets a catfish it's it's a little strange but i wanted to make sure that it was kind of graceful <laughs> um because otherwise it would just turn out to be too stony and um and all and, and all that so I, I i actually for this one wanted it to make to make it feel somewhat graceful but also very fortified which is a very strange goal to have um, this is actually my favorite strain to play with, um, mainly because it's probably the least aggressive, and if, I've, if I'm teaching new players how to play, um, it allows me to not be aggressive, but also have a pretty good game. Um, and the texture on the front here is pretty reminiscent of stone. Um, again, it's, it's all hand-painted and all that stuff. Um, oh, one other one other feature about it is the racing stripes on this guy, and I wanted to make sure that it has very. Um, <laughs> I I'll be honest, it it accidentally happened, and I I loved it, and it stuck, and I stuck with it. And one of the reasons why I stuck with it is it just made this piece feel so much more dynamic. Um, it just looks a lot cooler, and rather than having a completely solid gray piece I just I love having a racing stripe on this guy uh, so this is the storm piece um, storm uh, went through 
lots and lots and lots of variations for its name. Um, and here's the back. So one of the biggest things that I was focusing on with this is actually implementing their logo, which is Lightning. Uh, hopefully I can show it off. But it's, it's basically three lightning bolts uh, with an arc. And the, the idea behind them was actually to make them look um, very rough and tough, uh, very, very pumped up and, and, uh, and buff. And so I, you know, I spent a lot of time uh, just kind of getting these textures just right. Uh, one of the biggest features was to get them to be prismatic and to, you know, not, not necessarily prismatic, but to actually make them look like a, a crystal because um, they, their primary power is to charge other pieces and to knock them, knock them out of the way. Um, and so uh, it, it, they're kind of a rock'em sock'em type of pummeling type of piece. Um, one of the one of the other things that I implemented into the background for these was uh, lightning because they it, this is the only one that got a little hokey I guess <laughs> in my opinion um, but somehow it really lent itself to a unique type of background texture so I stuck with it um, but the lightning uh, I I foresee it playing the just the way that charges in the game work and everything like that. Um, charges are the number of of uh, charges are the number of uh, of uh, potency on a card. So the card that these guys actually have an affinity with is called Surge, and um, Surge this current Surge has two charges on it. So I foresee their powers eventually affecting the amount of uh, charges that are on cards and things like that. Um, and they, they'll possibly be able to short other nanobots out and things like that. And then last but not least, um, between, <laughs> funny story about these guys, these guys are named Vex. Um, between Storm and Vex, the last one that I showed you, we have really been trying to figure out um, game balance wise what the most powerful and potent nanobot is and this is truly um this goes into almost every game we play uh and it it is we are guessing it's between vex and storm but it there truly is no way to play or no way to tell um and we've we've probably we've played a lot of games so far and i'm i'm talking probably close to a thousand hours of gameplay um, and all of the strains feel perfectly balanced. Um, but with one reason why we think that it would be Vex or, or uh, Surge is, or I'm sorry, is Storm, is that they, both of them can prolong, like they, they can easily play Kingmakers. They can make or break the game. So that, that's why we really feel that those two are pretty potent. Same with Ghost, um, very potent. But uh, one trick about them is they all break down base features, um, base functions within the game. So no one strain is really more powerful than another. They just kind of have a small affinity perk for for each of um, for each of their cards. So with Vex, um, what I did with the background is I made it misty because um, they're supposed to be mysterious. Kind of did a little fog fog texture there. Um, one interesting thing is they're kind of designed to look like a jet engine and their logo is actually, um, a twisting action. Um, it's kind of an emblem that I was designing for, to represent, uh, twisting and it kind of, kind of looks like a ninja star or something spinning. But, um, the idea is, is that currently they have a card called twist that allows them to turn nanobots in any direction. So through mysterious forces of twisting and, and turbine action, you know, they're, they're able to rotate other nanobots. Um, and uh, again, hand-painted base. It's kind of like a, a grainy purple uh, with a really cool, subtle color effect on it. 
Um, and then the interesting thing that I designed, these are the only ones that I designed the white to encapsulate the color. Um, and what I mean by that is normally color pieces within all my other designs, uh, normally they're on the outside. And in this instance, the white is actually, the way I kind of felt it, I designed it is the white is actually on the outside holding the color um, of the piece inside. So random, <laughs> random, probably too much information about this piece. Um, it took me a lot of time. I actually had to hand paint shadow on the feet and things like that um, just to get it just right for this um, and to make sure that it was absolutely perfect. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean each again a nice a nice uh, um, a nice expansive background for all of the tiles so that way they all have uh, um, a different background on each tile but yeah so that's the box um, uh, this game seats eight players and it probably adds on 15 minutes to each player uh, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to email me or comment. And I am very excited to share this with you guys. Um, we're currently, uh, Mark and I are currently talking about uh, doing kind of a, um, some sort of event or something where we can uh, give this advanced copy away. So some lucky winner uh, will will potentially have a copy way before the rest of the world has it. Um, and if you don't mind, I'd like to keep it for a little bit first, but we'll definitely uh, figure out a way to get this into some lucky person's hands. Um, and so, yeah, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to, feel free to email us or anything like that. Um, and in case you haven't seen, here's our nice little figurines. Uh, that's what the relic figurine looks like, 3D printed. Lots of time. Each of these takes 15, well, nine of them take 15 hours to produce. So, um, boom. Very cool. And I can't believe how detailed, <laughs> how amazing this printer prints. Um, so, again, thank you everyone for your patience. I hope that the... Uh, that the unveiling of the box is uh, something to satiate your, your appetite for seeing the game. Um, so, again, any questions or anything, please like us on Facebook and uh, stay tuned for more details. Thanks.